are there more than two genders? Yeah. Great. Gender is fluid? Yeah. You mentioned a second ago that you have trans friends. Yep. Do you, in terms of the gender argument, do you notice that there are more than two genders? I mean, I'd, I'd agree that gender is probably not binary. So you can be male or female or non-binary, somewhere in between. I think that's your expression is up to you. Uh, Lots of different genders. Yeah, I would say so. Or, you know, whatever. I don't think it even really has to be defined either, just what you want to be. If, if 150 people uh, who, were, who were transitioned and were trans from uh, male to female were in prison last year, and 50% of them were ex-sexual predators. What would your opinion be about integration with regards to trans, I'm trying to get my vocab right here, trans males, i.e. new females? What would you feel about them being in women's uh, areas? And you can link that to um, bathrooms as well, toilets. That's the other talking point. What are your thoughts? Well, I'm not in prison, so it's, it's different. Like if it was... In a bathroom here at uni, I'd be like, whatever, it's fine, I don't care. Mm. But it's because it's got that label of, oh, they're a sexual predator. And mm. um, that, yeah, it probably isn't great, but I feel like personally, I don't have the, the right to say this because I am a cis female. I haven't had to deal with any of those troubles. I just what does, sorry, what does cis mean? Oh, I should were, know that. <laughs> you were born um, a female and like that's the, the gender you were assigned at birth and you've stayed with that um, gender. I think. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Um, right, so XX versus XY. As yeah. in you are what you are. Yeah, so I was, I was born a female. I'm a female now. Yeah. So I'm, you I'm identify a, as a female. Yeah, right? I'm a cis female, whereas I'm not like a trans right. female. Okay. Um, oh, okay. I think that's what it is. Um, the prison one's a complicated one, isn't it? Do you think there should be trans prisons? Well, doing psychology, we learn about prisons, and there's just there's not enough space to be fair to have a, a, a trans prison. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, like I've, I don't feel like I have the right to say no, you shouldn't be doing that. You, you should be doing this because I've not had to live with the the feeling inside my head, like oh my god, I am not a girl. Mm. I don't feel like a girl at all. But I have to wear skirts. I have to do that kind of. Mm. And for prisons, mm. the way I think of it is that if a trans woman. So if a, if, if a trans woman was in a male prison, they'd get like beaten up and just destroyed way more than if a trans woman was in a female prison. They're way more in danger in a male prison than they are in a female prison. And there's no, there's no I mean, at least from the data that I've seen, there's no link tying that trans women are any way more dangerous than other women. So when you, like, say, so when, women. When you say trans women, do you mean people, did you so mean? Trans women is someone who is assigned male at birth and then transitions to become a woman. So in terms of, in terms of solutions and in terms of the idea that as long as live and let live, and as long as we're helping people and they're safer and they want to, they, the progressive model of living how you want to live, there's no negative consequences. In terms of, if I was to say that last year, there was 120 trans uh, trans I'm trying to get my uh, vocab right here trans um, women yeah. so men biological yeah. who transitioned to become a woman 50% of them were sex offenders what would you say to that I probably wouldn't believe you but maybe that's also the way I think that's probably also I don't know the, the way I've been educated and stuff sure. I don't I'd like to see that data I'd like to see that study I don't know if I can believe you but sure. that's a shocking number if it is true but, but even, even hypothetically regardless of whether it's true or not I'm not going to ruin it by saying whether it is or not because independent thought but hypothetically would that change your because you've been compelling would that change your line of argument on, any, on anything that you've mentioned if that data were true. If that data were completely true, I think that, that would change that. I'd have to rethink some of my ideas. Biological predators who are now women in women's safe spaces, women areas. I mean, yeah, that probably would change my ideas slightly. If I, if I decide to transition into a female, yeah. if I'm a, if I, so if I'm a biological man, if you'll allow me that, and I, and I transition into a female, what's your opinion? If you're, You sound quite pro the idea that this, this should happen and we should be accepting of it. Which prison do I go into? If I commit a crime and I'm sentenced, sorry. Uh, what do you mean? So say... So if I'm a bi biological male and I, and I, and I transition to, into a female. And you commit a crime. I commit a crime and I'm a, and I'm a female, fully fledged. What, what prison do I go into, male or female? Well, I would say, obviously, you, ha you have the argument, this is similar to the bathroom argument as well. You use, use them both as the same, if you will. Yeah, if someone, you know, if, if a uh, man transitions to a woman, I would personally say that you should be able to use the woman's bathroom because that is who you 
are identifying as and I think that when you use these arguments it's almost a bit of a kind of uh, almost kind of a bit of a straw man in a way because you're you're assuming that that person is inherently bad and wants to do something bad mm. um i and obviously i think that paints quite a negative image of with the bathroom people. with the bathroom analogy yeah yeah and with the prison one as well because if you're saying you know oh i wouldn't want someone with um uh tr- like you know male uh sex organs if yeah. you will in the same place as uh people with female sex organs like you know you're you're presuming like something like that that they're gonna do something bad i don't think that's a very good argument in my opinion i think that people should just you know if you identify as a woman you should be able to use a woman's bathroom and yeah, I would say that. that. That That's hugely useful. So if I was to say, and I'm not going to say whether it's true or not, because lots of different data sources and we are in media saturated information overload territory in the 21st century. What if I was to tell you that last year, 130 people who were transitioned, fully transitioned, who were talking men to women in prisons, 50% of them were sex offenders. What would you, even if it was hypothetical, I'm not saying that's true, it might be, but if it was hypothetical, would you change your mind on anything you've said? Um, well... If it's hypothetical and we don't know if it's true, then... Let's I suspend don't. disbelief and say it's true. Um, but then, I don't know. I mean, you could say that with anyone. I mean, you have males in the, you know, that are sex offenders in prison with other men, mm. you know? Like, I don't see how, in my opinion, that's different. What do you think about in the situation with Leah Thomas in uh, transitioning to become female and becoming number one in the... Um, it's a really big swim meet in the US for that particular event and winning first. What, do, what are your thoughts to feminists and females over the last hundred years and your indeed your own thoughts about whether that's um, right or wrong or, or even just your opinion on it? I feel like... They, they have to be fully transitioned. It can't be like a half... Thing, which I know is controversial but this this thing with the swimming I'm I'm fine with trans live your life do what you want to do it's not affecting me that's fine but with the stuff with the swimming it's like this is Leah Thomas yeah yeah it's you know there's other female swimmers because we're just females are just not built dif- uh, built different from men mm. we just are we're not as like strong or skinnier mm. and because she's She's only just started um, her like testosterone, no, not testosterone, estrogen. Mm. Um, so she's still got a men's body. Mm. So oh, okay. So you're saying there's lines within the transitioning uh, process, and until the law should reflect yeah. that which is medically relevant to whether you are that or the other. Kind of, yeah. Because like, if I was trained, you know, because they get up at like five in the morning to train, and I was working really hard to swim in mm. in competitions, and then I got in a competition and I was against somebody and they were beating me to the point where they were they were on their second lap and I'm only just getting to my first lap mm. then I'd be like pissed off mm. and and you shouldn't even have to defend the fact that biologically men are stronger yeah men yeah. are men are stronger I'm physically myself, they are stronger if I was to have a fight with somebody that was the same height as me same weight as me they would win because they are just stronger yeah. in my opinion I obviously I don't want to speak on a topic that I don't know that much about um, I'm not trans myself but uh i do think that there are different biological advantages that exist within the same sexes as well so for example michael phelps he uh produces lactic acid at half the rate of his competitors uh that gives him a biological advantage even though he's the same you know sex as his competitors Mm -hmm. um and i think leah thomas um there have been trans athletes in the past who have transitioned from male to female and it's all about your testosterone levels if your testosterone levels are below the regulated amount which i i I think i've heard hers were then it's in my opinion i think it's fair i think trans athletes should be able to compete and i think that um with uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, there have been female athletes that have transitioned from male to female in the past and they've not won. And in my opinion, it seems like a lot of the uh, drama that's coming from this situation is because of the fact that she's won. And mm. yeah, uh, I would say if so she... Some of the other stuff goes under radar, but this is highlighted because she's won. Yeah, and maybe because if she had come third or second, then no one would be saying anything, mm. in my opinion. Mm. But um, yeah, obviously it does raise questions, but you know... I don't want to speak on, you know, on something. What do you think about that? So I think 
uh, if if the transition, if for example, someone that's transitioning with puberty blockers, right? They have puberty blockers from a young age. They don't even undergo puberty. They get tra they transition at the age of like 18, 19. The only difference between a bi quote unquote biological male and someone who's born biologically female is bone structure, right? So that that to me doesn't present large enough of an advantage to disqualify someone from sports. If someone has transitioned later, they went through puberty, then I agree that that, that an argument can be made there. And I think it's it's a it's an interesting topic. It's something where we should monitor, for example, testosterone levels, stuff like that. But I don't think banning trans women from competing overall is such a good idea. So this is really interesting. So when we talk about bone density and what makes a man a man and what makes a woman a woman, that's obviously been posed to the Labour Party lately, and no one wants to ask the answer the question, which I think is a massive talking point. But let's just say you're right, and let's say that if we ca basically if we catch them early enough, anyone can transition because all it is is bone density. Yeah. Surely under 18, any kind of propaganda any kind of marketing any kind of push any kind of persuasion at the at the at the, at the, at the other at the softer end of indoctrination surely under 18 is abuse so i don't like that that's quite heavy language indoctrination obviously and also if like transitioning has been happening for maybe 10 15 years quite consistently now if it truly was this much of an issue then all the top female competitors would be trans but that's not what we're seeing we're seeing small cases we're seeing at like average-ish levels. We're not seeing the top three uh, Olympic medals go to trans women every single, like, I don't know. Mm. We're seeing it, s like, scarcely. Mm. So I don't think it's as much of an issue as people think it is. The average age of transitioning tends to be under 20 years old. And they, obviously on the NHS and with regards to medical procedures and puberty blockers, I'm sure you, you sound quite informed. So this is available to children. So what are your thoughts on that? Because you seem quite progressive towards the idea that live and let live. But where do we draw the line with that? Uh, that's just one example with regards to, to the average age of transitioning. The, or not even the average age, but the percentage of people doing it under 18 years old. Um, obviously, I understand it's a very tricky situation. I've always felt very comfortable in my own body. Um, but I think there are a lot of people who, when they know that they're in the wrong body, they know. That's obviously something that I don't think any of us can really talk about. Um, we're all cis, as far as I'm aware. Um, but, what does, sorry, what does cis mean? Uh, you are the gender that you, or the sex even, that you were born as. Or, you know, you identify as the sex you were born as. Um, but I would... In my opinion, I, I don't know. I think if you feel that that is the right thing for you, then, well, you know, when you hit puberty, that's obviously after puberty, transition becomes a lot harder. Um, so if you want, would like to make that easier for yourself by doing it before that age or at that age, then I can understand that. But obviously, I also understand the argument of, mm. um, you know, you're very young, you might not understand. Do you know what percentage of the UK is uh, trans or is transitioning or, or is it just the percentage of, of, of that demographic? Do you know what percentage is? No. Less than half a percent. Now, someone said to me earlier, they said, well, there's 66 million people. So it's the same with, the, um, uh, with anything with regards to minorities. You can say, well, it's that percentage, but that means that it's 200,000 people. Yeah. So that's a really big number. But I think that's an interesting talking point. What are your thoughts on that to find out that it's less than half a percent? Did it change anything? Not really, because I always, I knew they were the minority. Mm. I know they're not like, you don't see it all the time, but yeah. it's the, the minority groups find it very hard to be themselves. And I, again, I've never really had to experience that. Sure. So I don't, it must be very hard for them. And I like the people that go out and they stand up for their own rights and I totally respect that because I'm not brave enough to do it. And I think, you know what, if you are, go do it, live your life. I don't know, whilst some people do change their mind and detransition, um, I would say that's, I think it's quite a, a small amount. I'm not exactly sure myself. But I would say that's a very few people. In terms of the D-trans movement? Yes. The, the stats on the D-trans movement are difficult to talk about because they're growing, but we don't have a live data. So it's, it is difficult to talk about. But what about suicide rates? Often people who are part of the progressive ideology say, actually, the, 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 the suicide rates that are so high with people that transition are because of public pressure and, and, and horror in that respect, not because they're suicidal. Do you have a thought on that? Uh, what do you mean by public pressure? Like uh, so, so I, for example, if I was to tell you that the, the, the suicide rate of those who have transitioned is 40%, mm. what would you have said the root cause of that was? Um, if I worded it like that. Honestly, I'm, uh, I'm not sure. But I do think that obviously when you transition, you have uh, a lot of, uh, you know, 
issues with identity and it can be something that's very hard to talk about and I think although there is I mean it the way that you talk about it there's an agenda to push um you know trans people in society I really don't see that often I think there is still a huge backlash towards trans people that you see around today and I think you know universities like this in my opinion I think they're very open they provide a safe space um and I think I don't know I, I would say yeah. That's a big number. Forty. I mean, we should be addressing that. That's a big number of su- suicide. Is an awful thing. 